What's up? This is Zaina Allen, and I'm here with Kia Clark, the CEO of the New York Liberty, because we are here for the Black Business Month highlight with Hot 97 and WBLS. Kia, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Awesome, awesome. So I just want to jump right into it. Um, you've been with the New York Liberty for 10 years, or you've grown with them, right? And now you've become the CEO. Let's start, let's talk about the beginning. What was that like for you to even work with the team at first? Sure. Yeah, believe it or not, it's actually been uh, 14 seasons oh, wow. that I've been with the team. Uh, I began as the marketing manager. I came here specifically uh, to learn and grow and uh, really be the voice of the marketing channel of this team. Um, I ran social, um, I did a lot of game day events, um, things along those lines. And, you know, as the team grew and as my role progressed, um, really transitioned into uh, operations. Um, as uh, vice president of team business development and then ultimately uh, the COO of the team and finally um, for the last five years the CEO. And how has it been like to grow with the team? Because the team started out uh, just pretty much entry level if you will just like you and you both have grown together. What, is been, what has it been like to grow along with the yeah. team? It's rare I think that people stay with the company as long as I have but there's something really special about live entertainment and quite honestly, um, the peaks and valleys, the ebbs and flows that the Liberty have experienced. Whether we were playing at Madison Square Garden or playing in Newark, New Jersey, and really, you know, the, the culmination or the really, the highlight for me has been the move to Brooklyn, the move to Barclays Center. Um, no day has been the same, no season has ever looked like the one before. And I think that's really been a, you know, the, a driving factor, a driving force in my longevity with the franchise. Absolutely, and you, know, you mentioned the, all the moving that the team has done. We are finally at Barclays Center. What has it been like to sit, to finally sit down somewhere, I guess you could say, plant your roots, and what do you expect to grow from this? Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. I always describe it as planting roots, um, a home for our fan base, a home for our players, quite honestly, a home for the, uh, the front office staff on the business and basketball side where you really feel like you could start to focus on excellence and growth and really um, just having a great time for these fans. It's been referred to as um, the, the uh, best summer party in Brooklyn. Um, if you haven't been to a game, I encourage you to come out to a game because it is about high quality, excellent basketball. It cannot be matched. You know, we just watched um, our, our USA team um, win gold for the eighth time in a row. And, uh, you know, that sliver of high quality basketball is what exists every single day in the WNBA. And to do it here in Brooklyn, to do it in this building, to do it for this fan base is super, super special. Absolutely, absolutely. And we've seen such a growth in the popularity of the WNBA recently. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it popped off at. But I do know that we've seen such a, great, a, a good growth of popularity of the WNBA and everybody loves it so much. What has it been like to be the CEO of a team, of, of a league that is 80% black women as it is? What has that been like for you? Yeah, I'd have to say a long time coming. You know, I, I talked about the 14 seasons that I've been with this team. I actually spent five years at the league office before that. And I think internally for people who have been a part of this, um, we've always hoped and wished for a moment like this where pop culture is talking about us, where TV ratings are at an all time high, where um, arenas are selling out throughout the country where partners and corporate sponsors are really aligning with us and locking arms and saying we believe in what you're about um, and it's really you know as the CEO from my experience it's about this being a legitimate business mm -hmm. and I could not be prouder of this moment in time um, we're not done yet it's, it's all gas no brakes still um, but just paying attention to, to where we've been and understanding you know, some of the mistakes that were made early on or some of the things that we were um, not so open to take risks and try um, are just a part of our normal um, course of business now. And I think it's paid dividends in major ways. Absolutely. And you know, um, it's obvious that you have a passion here. We can definitely see in the way that you talk about the team and talk about your work. Um, what has been the most rewarding part of being the CEO for, for the New York Liberty? Yeah, I'd have to say the most rewarding part um, 
aside from being number one in the WNBA right now and leading the league on the court, um, because my purview is very much off court, it, it has to be just the, the joy that is exuded from these fans. And the way that they're showing up for this team um, is, is paramount. Uh, we have an 83% increase in attendance since 2023, and in 2023 we had already seen a double-digit increase. So the way people are really showing up for this team, and not only saying they're a fan, you know, as New Yorkers especially, mm -hmm. I think people are really quick to say, you know, the Nets are my team, or the Knicks are my team, the Jets are the Giants. You don't have to choose when it comes to the WNBA, and I think there's finally a feeling throughout that's permeating throughout the city where the Liberty is New York's team. And um, that was my hope, that was the objective. You know, when I joined the team in 2011, I couldn't say with a straight face that that's where we were. I think we definitely had some really fervent fans. We have had fans who have been with us since 1997, um, and we love them, and we um, celebrate that legacy. See, but we're super excited about the new fans who have joined us and the new families, you know, when there's, you know, babies three and four years old, um, you know, wobbling their way through the arena and dancing to the music, you know, participating in community events. That's really the, the highlight for me and the greatest joy. So um, I don't think I've had a season that's gone as well as the 2024 season has gone thus far. Um, we hope it ends up completely in our favor come October. Um, but definitely the highlight has been just seeing that joy that happens in the arena each and every night. It's the community. You, it's the community. You enjoy the community. And I Absolutely. love that. I want to know when it comes to the community, um, how does how does that impact you personally? Like the amount of love that you feel from everybody, like people are so hyped that this is in Barclay Center in Brooklyn. Brooklyn Knights, we already know how Brooklyn gets down. <laughs> so what is this feeling? Like? Absolutely. I mean, I think a great example of how much we value being a part of this community um, resonates in we don't want to just invite you into our building. Of course, we want you to be a part of it. Um, but we go outside too. We actually just uh, executed 22 events in 30 days. While the Olympics were going on, there were no games that happened um, in the building. So we made a decision, a concerted decision to be outside. We literally were like, hashtag, we outside, we're showing up at events throughout New York. Um, we even curated our own um, uh, finale event, which was uh, the first ever Brooklyn Dribble um, at the Brooklyn Bridge Park, where you know over 2,000 um, families, kids, people um, did a one mile dribble parade and ended in a fan fest. That's the kind of love that we always want to show back, and it's 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 not just you know where we say we're going to do something or we're doing it because we want people to buy tickets. It's really about this is our community. This is where we live. This is where we thrive, and we want to show up for um, the fans just as much as they show up for us. Absolutely, and I want to take it back really quick um, to your role here as CEO. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're the first CEO. I am. Yeah. Um, very, first of all, <laughs> I'm, I'm in awe of that. That is amazing, and especially because it's a black woman. Now, because of that, has there been any challenges, not only being the first CEO, but also being the first CEO that is a black person, but also being the first CEO that is a black person and a black woman? Yeah, uh, great question. You know, certainly there have been leaders um, who have led this team on the business side. Um, I have the great privilege of watching amazing leaders um, throughout my career, both at the league and in other industries and even here at the New York Liberty. And I think um, it's a really special um, privilege that I count um, that I'm able to lead this team, especially at a time such as this. Um, of course, there's challenges. Um, nothing comes easy. Nothing worth having comes easy. I think we all know that old adage. And, you know, for me, I think the experience that I had in an underrepresented um, atmosphere at times before I was in a leadership role, um, you know, male dominated is what we automatically think about when we think about sports. The WNBA actually happens to have a lot of women who work in the front office, but not always necessarily in leadership roles and not always necessarily women who look like me. Yeah. And I'm so proud that I was um, privileged to be able to um, change what the front office looks like in terms of hiring practices. Uh, nearly my entire executive leadership team is women. I've intentionally and deliberately hired women of color, um, and we are the ones who get to represent this really diverse product that is on the court. So when you talk about a league that's you know 80 plus percent black women, um, 
it resonates. You know, we want to do something um, that's for the culture and at this intersection of sports and culture. And that's really, you know, again, I count it as a privilege, but it is not without challenge. I think that might be the actual epitome of the challenge. It is that intersection that sometimes women aren't always valued at the highest level and black women even less or so, right? Yeah. So as a personally, you're up against, I'm up against those challenges every day in my life. But then all of a sudden at work, I'm working toward, you know, trying to amplify and set them on the biggest stage and make sure that people are respecting their game, respecting what it is that they bring to the table, both on the court and off the court. And it's a challenge, no, I can't lie about that, but it's a welcome challenge and one that I pretty much signed up for for my entire career. Absolutely, and so final question, I just wanna know what does the future hold for you, for the Liberty, for you and the Liberty together? What do you see this growing and, and budding into? Yeah, I think we're all seeing something really special right now happen for Absolutely. women's sports as a whole. Um, the growth that we've uh, encountered over this last year, especially with this rookie class that came in, but also with the high, high talent that already existed, um, what the future holds for the Liberty is we're going all the way. And when I say going all the way, I, I know that that includes winning a championship. I know that that includes really having uh, business success. Um, the health of this business is really contingent upon um, the management and what, what our team puts forth. So that's what I see for this team, and I'm really excited to be um, at, the, at the leadership role in that, in that regard. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Kia, for your time. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for tuning in.